Hi everyone, my name is Kenna Alsayed. I am an artist and I have been asked by Nickel Plate Arts to upload a video of myself working on uh, some of my artwork, which I am more than happy to do because this is contributing to their campaign of art, not germs, which as a germaphobe, I totally approve of. This is awesome. Um, Right now, unfortunately, throughout the world, we are experiencing COVID-19, which is making any kind of social interaction uh, a very frowned upon activity. So while we are all doing our social distancing, which is a very, very important thing, I am thumbs up about that because sooner we flatten the curve, sooner we can get back out and do what we usually do, uh, nickel plate, has decided to help people not feel isolated or you know, give them something to get inspired by. Maybe they can follow along. Uh, they are uploading content, I think daily onto their uh, Facebook page and everybody's live streaming some just awesome things. It's, it's been a lot of fun to watch. I'm even watching them and uh, I'm more than happy to contribute to that. So today, I am going to work on one of my expressive mixed media um, horse sketches. Um, some people know me at Nickel Plate for this or outside other places, they know me for these sketches. And I do not think I have ever uploaded a video of me creating one of these. There have been a few that have kind of circulated around um, from events that I go to, because I live draw at these events, but I have never, ever, ever uploaded a video of me creating one of these step-by-step. -step. So you guys are gonna be seeing something pretty special today, the exclusive only on Nickel Plate. Um, so I will get going on that in just a second. I am sorry that this is a pre-recorded uh, video. I am currently overseas at the moment. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments, just comment below the video. I'll come back in later and like type out responses to it. So if I forget to mention anything in my video, please let me know. Um, I think that is about it. Oh, I forgot to say how much I love Nickel Plate and what a fantastic resource it is for the entire community. It is in Noblesville, Indiana. They are fantastic. I love their events. They are great people to work with. I've always had very positive interactions with them. So if you have never visited there, if you like art or curious about art, if you are an artist, if you are a family looking for an activity that includes art, you have to check them out. They are just so fantastic. I cannot say enough good things about them. But without further ado, let me uh, get started on this little ink sketch and hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, wherever you are watching from, I hope you have a fantastic day. Okay, so when I do these mixed media type ink and watercolor sketches, I start with paper and I used to do it all out of my head. Like I had no photo references, I would just create the artwork. But I started to draw blanks on different poses to do so. Now I'll every now and then use like a little photograph just as a guideline. So for this, I am just going to kind of do a little sketch. I just kind of want the movement and the eye, like the idea of this horse. I'm not trying to make it look like a portrait. I'm not trying to get all the detail. I'm just trying to get the idea of this horse and what to me are the most important elements so it reads as the movement of this horse. Sorry if I'm not talking too much, I am one of those people that if I try to do two things at once, I will somehow explode. I don't know how, it just happens. Some people chew gum and they can't walk, they fall, I explode. Don't know how it happens. I'm special that way.
So there is an exceedingly roughed out idea of this horse. Of course, I wanna have the tail kind of go that way and exaggerate that because it's fun. All right, so the next thing I do is I bring in the watercolor paint and I just kind of go nuts with it. You know, I'm covering up all of these lines I just did, all these exceedingly precise lines. Doing this, those that know me know that I started out doing extremely realistic and detailed work. Like I love detail stuff. I go insane for it. And I started doing these sketches, I think it was like five or six years ago, um, because I injured my shoulder that I draw with. And I was going through an ex excruciatingly like just horrible like uh, period of migraines if you will whenever I worked if I drew anything for five minutes or even more I would have a crippling migraine and I wouldn't be able to get out of bed for a day or two so let that drip, 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 drip. Um, I was getting really frustrated I wanted to keep working so I just picked up some stuff laying around, happened to have some ink, and I just started kind of doodling and sketching and just going completely in the opposite direction of what I normally do. And I really liked how it looked. It was so different. I could get them done so quickly. And I just, I they appealed to me. And what surprised me is I thought, okay, well, I like these, but it's kind of like when you have a kid or a horse or a dog or anything, you think yours is the best, no matter what. You think it's adorable and it's the best thing in the world. So I liked them, but I didn't expect other people to respond to them the way that they did. And people have really just, they've accepted these, they like them. And I absolutely love that I can do realistic and expressive and people seem to enjoy both. So right now I'm kind of figuring out where I want darks and lights, my shapes, things like that. What to me creates an overall satisfying painting. kind of leaning heavy towards the darks being on this side. Now the fun part is take our little spray bottle and just kind of go to town on it. See, we're reclaiming the pencil lines underneath, and we are creating a fun kind of shape with the paint. And if we really want to get messy, because this gets messy so quickly, this get some of the water off of it haha -ha, there we go making a mess that's okay then I can go back in darken some things up
because in my mind I'm already knowing where I kind of want my light source to be from and knowing what parts I really want to define and have stand out. So I kind of know where I want my darks to go and where the lights are going to go. I know a lot of this looks pretty dark, but it will dry lighter. And I can go back in and do some more detail work once it dries. So this is about as much as I want to do. I lied, I'm going back in. Do a little roughing out. Okay, and now through the magic of film editing, this will dry instantaneously. And, and magic, it's dry. I totally did not have a hair dryer in here. Okay, yes, it turned into a bit of an art salon. That was a horrible pun. I hope somebody appreciated it though. Anyway, so watercolor layer is now pretty dry. As you guys can see, it has lightened considerably. Uh, the color I'm using, by the way, is indigo blue. Indigo blue is my favorite paint color ever. It is my go-to. I will use it till the day I die. I absolutely love indigo blue. Don't know why, I just do. Okay, so we've got still the faint outline of the horse underneath. We now have our blue layer. And what I do is I go back in with some pens right now, and I'm just gonna start darkening and defining what I think are the most interesting lines or parts that to me are essential for it to read as a horse. Um, those that know me know that I am a equestrian. I have ridden my entire life and uh, I never did national level shows. I did like local academy shows, things like that, because my parents had me, you know, choose. They said, you can't do shows and go to college. We can't afford it. I voted horse shows. They overruled and I had to go to college. So sad, sad, sad. But I love horses. I've studied horses my entire life. I love different breeds. I love everything about them except mucking out stalls and getting thrown off of them. Those are not fun things, but um, I love to study different breeds, their anatomy, the uh, disciplines that they're used in, different riding disciplines like saddle seat, western, dressage, event, like all that kind of stuff. But so I like horses. And some people that know me also know that my studio is known as Sorrel Studios because it was named uh, after my solid Sorrel paint gelding jambalaya. So that's why it's Sorrel Studios. And unfortunately, my sweet little baby boy passed away this last May. He was 27 years old and I, have the pleasure of saying that for 20 years, he was my horse. He was quite the character and I absolutely miss him. But such is life, fortunately. So right now I'm just kind of filling in. I'm going not so much for like a continuous shading. I'm just kind of going with different cross hatching, different line work things like that. 
because I kind of want the lines themselves to evoke the movement of the horse. So it's not like you need everything in place. You just want the movement of the horse kind of captured in the line work. Got to do the tail. I love drawing horse tails. I don't know why they are just so much fun for me. So if you guys go and look through my work, especially the ink sketches, you'll notice I may darken out the head of the horse. I may leave other parts out. Legs might not be complete, but more often than not, there will be a tail. Don't know why. I just absolutely love doing it. And again, these are so much fun to do for me. Like I love doing them because I'm used to working on pieces of detailed artwork. Like I think I've had a couple paintings I've spent over a year on, off and on. Like I'd sit down, work for three or four hours at a time for a few months, then take a break, work on other stuff, come back to it. But these are just so much fun because they're almost like quick gesture sketches. They keep me thinking, they keep me fresh. I have to just kind of go with the flow. It is mentally freeing when you are working on something for months on end and then you can just kind of jump in and do a quick expressive sketch and still get the same idea across. Okay. So I kind of did some ink stuff and now I'm actually going to add a little bit more watercolor because I want to darken some things up a bit. Because like you guys see, it lightened up once it dried. And that's part of the fun. This actually, what's nice too about this is with my realistic works, I'm far too controlled. I'm like a little control freak, every line, I know where it's gonna go, I know exactly how it needs to look. This makes me surrender some of my control and OCD uh, type behavior because I don't know exactly how light it's gonna dry, I don't know what's gonna happen if I use my spray bottle. I'm just adding, you know, variables into it and, well, the spray bottle actually is, it's just chaos, which is wonderful. It really makes me have to relinquish any kind of control, which is quite freeing sometimes when it comes to art. Darken that tail in a bit. I love exaggerating like flowing tails. So I'm gonna have it come like all the way over here. I have seen some horses uh, show horses that have had tails that long. And they are a lot of work to keep in that pristine of a condition. A lot of maintenance goes into that. actually going to darken the whole head in a little bit. Well, a little bit. I lied a lot. Severely darken that in. And then we're going to go back to the chaos I just mentioned, the spray bottle. Let's see what that does. And see, so you can kind of control where it might bleed out to a bit, but you're not in 100% control, which I love. It's a bit like horseback riding. You're in some control, but you can't always be in 100% control of your horse. Your horse will have a little bit of something to say every now and then. It's a partnership, so there we go. I actually really like that. And see, I've got a lot of darks there. I've got a little bit there, actually. I'm gonna, there we go. Let that bleed out a little bit. Too. Well, that sounded horrible, let it bleed out. We're not killing our artwork. Uh, not that kind of video. Um, let it 
just kind of do its thing, its watercolor goodness. Okay, so I kind of like how that's going. Now, there is a lot of very wet stuff. I'm gonna try to work around it. So, because I don't wanna have to pull out the hair dryer again. Um, what I like to do is I like to include color pencil into these mixed media pieces. And this is where I'm gonna get a lot of my highlight reclaimed because I've lost detail, I've darkened it in a bit, and you need some highlights to really make it pop and to give a bit of definition. So I'm going to, and the fun thing is you can actually do this, kind of melts into it when it's really wet, but I'm not gonna push it too much because I do not want to rip the paper. But like here, add that highlight back there because my light source I'm gonna follow a bit with this photograph where light source is hitting that side so it's a backlit picture so I'm just gonna kind of go in here and again this is a wonderful way to reclaim some detail help give suggestions on where like certain parts of the horse are that may have been lost Quite a, few, ugh, quite a few of these color pencils sharpened and ready to go because I go through them and I do not have an electric pencil sharpener near me so I don't want to make you guys wait around while I hand sharpen everything again. So see even though that's super saturated with water I can still get color pencil in there. It's just not going to be as defined. So I think I've done what I can with it at this stage. So I'm going to take a little break again and grab the hair dryer and dry it real quick. So I will be right back, people. And we are back again. I ran real quick and uh, blow dried this again. So you guys can see yet again. It was wet, now it's pretty much dry. It lightened up on us a bit. So now it's dry enough, I can start to put in some more of the highlights here. following the light exactly, the light source exactly from the photo because this is not a photorealistic artwork. I'm using it as a suggestion. And then I kind of go in, I just go where I feel like I need to have more light. That's where it gets to be a bit more fun because can do whatever I want and whatever I think looks good for the artwork. Okay, and then if there's anything that I think needs to be darkened in, I can just go back with the marker. I can even outline a little bit around the color pencil. I want to just to create more lines and textures and fun things like that. But that in essence is how I do my expressive ink 
drawings and they are a ton of fun to do. And I do sometimes incorporate like different colors, but I like this color palette the best. I love using indigo blue, black marker and white color pencil and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna sign it real quick. Operating. Let's see. Ta da! There you go, guys. There is a very quick, uh, expressive mixed media horse artwork. Hope you enjoyed it.